I gotta say, I kind of like it here. You no, know, anywhere two guys can pass out while hurling Hail Marys at each other's tits is my kind of place. What's up, guys? Welcome back to West of Loathing, where the cows finally came home and then quickly started killing everyone. Like, I'm still not really sure what's going on out there. I'm trying to get further west to figure things out, but like, clearly I can't stupid walk my way across the whole country. I need to get myself a horse. The only problem with that is my options are lacking. We can go with the brain as smooth as an egg horse, the afraid of everything horse, the dead horse, or the high as a kite horse. And of course, I left the decision up to you guys in the comments of last episode, and the overwhelming response was high as a kite horse. I'm just gonna say right now that I don't feel good about relying on a thousand pound animal with a substance abuse problem, but I'm a man of my word. Afternoon, sir, what can I do for you? Can you sell me a horse? Oh, sure thing. I should warn you though, horses get mighty attached to their riders. Once you've bought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Great, I get this thing for life. Which one are you interested in? Give me the one with the crazy eyes. Okay, I, I gotta warn you, this horse has seen some sh some stuff, but I'll sell him for a thousand meat. A thousand meat? He costs the same as all these other horses? You don't have some kind of damaged goods discount, or like a rehab coupon or something? Is there something wrong with him? Oh, no, not as such. He's perfectly functional. But... Well, he's always sneaking off to Thousand Snakes Gulch to chew on the loco weed that grows there. Yeah, I know, I was the one who got him back. You know, I was the one who punched the seven foot two snakes. You don't need to remind me. I wanna know what's going on upstairs. You're, uh, that makes him see crazy things? I think it's more like he does it to forget about the crazy things he sees all the time anyway. Great. Well, color me intrigued, I'll take him. Thanks! Here's the keys! Rod safe. Um, just so we're on the same page, I'm not gonna be shoving a key into any part of my horse. All of his holes will remain keyless. This is a thousand meat gone. At least I get to name him. Tim's not gonna do. His name is Mr. Hands. I think I'm gonna have a hard time figuring out whether or not you're paying attention to me, but your name is Mr. Hands now. Are you ready to go on an adventure, Mr. Hands? I'm gonna take that twitch as a yes. <laughs> Let's ride Mr. Hands out of town. Once you leave Boring Springs, you won't be able to come back. Any unfinished business you've got will forever remain unfinished. Are you sure you're ready to leave? I don't think I have any unfinished business here. Yeah, you know what? I'm ready to go. Alrighty then. You're properly horsed and ready to start your new life in the West. Am I properly horsed? All you need now is a partner. Somebody to share the trail with. Somebody you can rely on for emotional and combat support. Who will you take with you? Oh, that's an easy choice. I mean, come on, like... If I have to cuddle up next to somebody by a campfire in the middle of the desert, it's not gonna be Crazy Pete or drunk old Doc Alice. It's gonna be Susie Cochran. You pop back to the saloon and collect Susie. Let's hit the trail. She is gonna be so impressed by my horse. <laughs> her and Mr. Her hands are gonna be great friends, I can already tell. Day one, the first day of the rest of your life. Bitch, excuse you? Everyone in this town is in such a bad mood, and like, it's such a rush to get wherever they're going. No, no one just takes the time to drunkenly stumble down the road anymore. Uh, Susie? Are you trying to get my attention because there's a room for rent? Or are you limbering up for all the terrible things we could do in that room? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Steve. <laughs> You can consider my cow poked, and I know what some of you guys are gonna say. Hey, she just lost her whole family, what are you doing? Well, it just means that she's definitely single and doesn't have any baggage. Let's have a talk, partner. Howdy, Susie. I'd like to check up on some of the ranches in these parts, see how bad the cow attacks are getting. Not gonna lie, that's a little disappointing, but okay, all right. Do you know some? Not in great detail, but I know roughly where a few are, or at least, were, I guess we'll have to see. There's one not too far from here. The Stearns Ranch. 
Okay, but what do you think we should do next? Maybe each other? Hmm, well, if we're looking to get a move on westward, I reckon a train's the way to go. Didn't the map the holster gave you have a marker for some railroad camp or other? Might be worth checking out. Any other ideas? Susie says you should see the bartender about renting a room in dirt water. It'd be nice to have a base of operations. Okay, okay, you know what? That's a start. I'll, I'll take it. Thanks for the reminder. In the meantime, I gotta ask, why is there a ghost wagon in the middle of the road? There's a weird ghostly carriage here. Get in. Nope, nope, not really looking to get abducted by ghosts right now. I'm sorry, little girl. Could you maybe stop hammering me in the tits with those flowers? <laughs> Can we maybe get you back to your parents? There's a floating wagon over there that's putting out some real stranger danger vibes. <gasps> oh, she's selling flowers for 50 meat. Why would I give you 50 meat for something you pulled out of the ground and that Susie may like? Okay, you know what? I'll take them. <laughs> You're a genius. Step one, rent a room. Step two, provide flower present. Step three, clap stick cheeks. Step 0 0.5, however, is inspect the local spittoon. <laughs> right down up close. This is a spittoon, which is sort of a brass bucket that people spit into instead of spitting on the floor. Because not spitting at all is not an option in this society. I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're pretty intimately familiar with spittoons already, sicko. I'm sorry, who's judging me right now? Is there some kind of spittoon fairy or is my brain finally succumbing to the psychosis of the last time I explored one of these things? I'm gonna inspect it, there's always something inside these. Look, the Jewel Saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting pit. That's a little disappointing. But this spittoon is still a spittoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside, it isn't a fancy rancid tobacco spit. <laughs> Listen, I still don't know who you are, so I'm still not listening. <sighs> Here we go again. All right, fine. You're now hunkered down next to a brass filth bucket, which has probably never been cleaned or emptied because you're near the desert and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. So, that's a good thing, right? No, that's bad, because it's only the water part of the spit that evaporates. This brass bucket is half full with the rest of the spit. The toxins and filth that don't evaporate. Several years worth distilled and concentrated until it's the consistency of molasses. People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts into the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. So what you're saying is I'm gonna have to really push my hand into it, got it. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something the color and viscosity of maple syrup, except instead of maple, it's flavored with the inside of the mouths of people who chew cigars, instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. Yeah, glorp. It feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Except instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like someone ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. It feels like your hand is dissolving. Well, then we don't have anything left to lose, do we? Keep on searching. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-covered porcelain cow figurine. Who would put something like that in there? A useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you're still able to have any and you hate them. <laughs> Listen, I'll figure out whether or not I can have children soon enough. I just need to rent a room. <laughs> Something tells me the 15% stench resistance that I'm getting from these sweet smelling flowers aren't gonna cut it when I've got a filthy porcelain cow and a nasty ring from the last platoon that I haven't cleaned off. So like, I've still got, what, like 85% human spit smell? I don't suppose I could rent myself a room with a shower, if showers exist. Bartender, do showers exist? Well, howdy there. Always nice to see a new face in town. Welcome to the Jewel Saloon. Oh, hi, thanks, I'm Steve. Glad to know you, Steve. Folks around here just call me Lloyd. What can I do for you? Oh, it's nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw the sign out front advertising a room. Well, that's right, finest room in the house and plenty of room for your partner too. You interested? 
What do you know about my partner? Uh, how much does it cost? Well, that's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker feller, and he paid a month in advance, right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like a decent sort, so the room's yours if you want, gratis. Wow, that's lucky. <laughs> All right, so freeze the exact kind of price I was looking for. You didn't tell me whether or not there was a shower in there, though, Lloyd. I don't suppose you have anything else. Oh, do you need help with anything? Well, if you're handy with mechanical type stuff, something's gone wrong with our player piano player. Player piano player. I, I thought the music sounded a little off. Yeah, it's real weird. It's like, just listen. I gotta be upfront with you, Lloyd. I don't think that's an issue for a mechanic. I think that's an issue for an exorcist. <laughs> I'll see what I can do, though. Thanks, I poked around in him myself, but I lost the key. This is suddenly taking a strange turn. So there's some kind of robotic piano playing man here. <laughs> oh yeah, the piano player is not very good at his job. Let's try to fix him, I guess. <laughs> You lift up the player piano player's coat to reel the hatch on his back that leads to his innards. It's locked, but it's not a very good lock, and I know how to pick a lock. Boom. You open the hatch and check out the machinery inside. There's obviously something wrong, given all the plinking and sproinging and clicking noises coming out of the gears and stuff. Looks pretty complicated. Oh, I need five mysticality. All right, well, I guess we'll go get smart somewhere. I just want to get up to my room to be perfectly honest. Hey, how you doing? That gal doesn't look like she's in the mood to talk. Yeah, they never are, okay? You just got to get them to come around to you. Susie's still got a big frown on her face. What's wrong with you? Hey, Susie, what do you think of the place? It's all right, town's a bit busy for my taste, but it makes a change from being on the road. Gotta wash the dust off once in a while, right? Yep, and then you can go back out and collect some fresh new dust. Uh, I'm gonna laugh at her, yeah, it's just, nope, that's gonna end the conversation. Okay, let's let's go up to our room, let's, let's go get comfortable. You look comfortable. <laughs> Don't suppose you'd like to, oh, this is Susie's bed and my bed would be all the way over here. Great. All right, Steve, you're gonna look yourself in that mirror, you're gonna psych yourself up, we're gonna do some stretches, and then you're gonna bone down. <laughs> you call yourself a good-for-nothing, good-for-nothing jerk. I, I like the energy, okay. Not quite what I was looking for. You're now angry, apparently. Keep going, keep going. You call yourself a good-for-nothing, four-flushing jerk. Really expanding the vocabulary, all right. We're getting places, you better not insult yourself anymore. You get any angrier, you're liable to pass out. Aw, <laughs> oh, come on, did that do anything? No, of course not. Am I forgetting anything? No, just to fix the freaking piano guy. All right, well, what does being angry even do? Oh, six muscle, six mysticality, six moxie. So I can actually go fix the thing now. I got smarter by calling myself a good for nothing, good for nothing, good for nothing. Can I f yeah, there we go. Oh, I see what's wrong. You recalibrate some springs and rearrange some gears and the machinery inside starts operating smoothly. The music improves immediately. Nothing to it. Yeah, all right. Let's get ourselves a reward, I would hope. Could always use a little bit more meat. I, uh... Managed to fix your piano player, piano player, player, piano. I thought so, he sounded much better. Thanks a heap, Steve. I'd offer you a free room in exchange, but you already got one. Aw, <laughs> oh, no worries, Lloyd. <laughs> Appreciate it. You could give me some money, though. Maybe? No? All right then, screw me, I guess. I gotta say, I kinda like it here. No, anywhere two guys can pass out while hurling Hail Marys at each other's tits is my kind of place. <laughs> Are you two okay? These guys must have fallen asleep during a brawl. Well, good for them. You two rest easy. I'll be over here sliding into some DMs, ladies. <laughs> They're engrossed in conversation. Leave them be. Why is it so hard to talk to women out west? I just wanna put a baby in you. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> Let's talk to this one-eyed hobo. He's still staring blankly off into space, listening to the piano. 
Okay, you're not interested, huh? All right, I guess I can go over here. What are you two up to? These guys are having a spirited discussion about guns and which of theirs is nicer. Yeah, not all that interested in talking about guns. Mine's a deputy slop meat. The man points to the sign on the counter. Slop, five meat. Sure, why not? I got a plate of slop. You never know when you're gonna need slop. Oh, there's a kitchen, there's a stage, more ladies. Hey, how come they're allowed to drink without hats on? That's a good point, actually. Uh, never mind, nope, nope, not interested. I probably shouldn't be back here in the kitchen, but maybe they're cool. Hey, what are you doing in here? Employees only, bud. Oh, uh, sorry, I, I was just, you know, looking around. So you're the nosy type, eh? Well, I prefer adventuresome. As it happens, there's something you could do for me. I'm out of salt, Peter, and need someone to go pick me up some more. Salt, Peter? Oh, is, is that used to make gunpowder? And other things, look, who's the chef here, me or you? Oh, okay, okay, well, where can I find it? Your best bet's a military camp, because it's used to make gunpowder. <laughs> Shut up, the nearest one is uh, Fort Cowardice. They keep a little in green jars. Okay, be right back. Um, can we talk about the fact that that guy's clearly gonna blow everyone up? This lady's too busy washing dishes to pay attention to you. Great, great. This shelf is full of canned and bottled ingredients and boxes of slop helper. Slop and gunpowder. Yeah, this is a, a really, really weird town. <gasps> Maybe we can watch some live entertainment? Okay. I don't know what the point is, but more cowbell. I don't suppose I should be a good little adventurous boy and set this back up. And it made me level up. I got three more muscle for picking up a chair. I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think that's pretty much everything for the town saloon, which is usually the most interesting place to go, except for the poker room. I had quite a bit of luck with poker in that little backwater town we were in earlier, but I don't know about here. This looks a little bit more competitive. Oh, and they've got rules. Hundreds of weird rules in tiny print. Okay, yeah, threes are wild unless accompanied by three two of clubs. Got it. A pair of, uh-huh, and then any player, yup, a wild, yep, clubs, three, and I understand. I've thoroughly read your user agreement and accept. Can we play poker now? You sit down at the poker table. A dealer emerges from somewhere in the back and sits down next to you. The lady to your right introduces herself as Nora and the player to your left says his name is Ben. The dealer tells you that the ante is 20 meat. Ante up. The dealer gives the deck a shuffle and then deals. A hand of cards glides across the table to you. It's a pretty decent hand. A five of spades, a homicide queen, and an eight. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I've only got three cards and something called a homicide queen. <laughs> I really should have paid attention to those hundred small rules. It's the first round. The pot is 60 meat and you estimate your chances of winning at around 30%. Okay, so I can cleverly raise by using 20 meat and mysticality. I can grit your teeth and strategize with one grit. I can check, which would give me a 5% increased chance of winning or fold. Oh, I don't actually know what to do here. <laughs> um, I mean, 30% chance isn't that bad. Actually, no, it, it's about what you would expect with three people. I, I'm gonna check. I wanna raise my chances. Nora raises. Okay, I'll call. And we'll continue on. The second round of betting, the pot is 120 meats and you estimate your chances of winning around 35%. Check again. And Ben sighs and raises. Interesting, I'll call. Carrying on, it's the last round of betting. Time to do or die. The pot is 180 meat and you estimate your chances of winning around 40%. Uh, I'm gonna cleverly raise this time. I'm gonna use my mysticality to hopefully get them off of it. Whoa, I think they called. Okay, uh, reveal my cards and I lost. Well, I guess I'm just gonna walk away with less meat. What's a homicide queen? 
guys, I'm sorry. I know I need to go on an adventure, okay? I can't spend this entire episode in the saloon, but like, I, I refuse to be beaten by some kind of knockoff Yu-Gi-Oh poker. So I played another hand. This time around, I got a straight, which apparently beats a South Carolina straight and a different straight. Whatever, I got 120 meat so I could walk away having broken even, I think. It's for the best. There's no way I could have faced Susie telling her that I got swindled on our first day here. <laughs> Mr. Hands, I'm gonna comb your mane and you're gonna make a glurk noise, which may or may not mean you like it. You may not even realize that I'm here, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Let's saddle up and get out of here. We're gonna go to Stern's Ranch, see if we can find what's going on out there. You notice trails of burnt vegetation off the side of the trail, which can only mean one thing, a hill calf is grazing nearby. Oh, okay, let's track it down. That's just a cow. I mean, I, I guess it's a cow worth punching. Let's let's attack it. It's apparently a hell calf. Oh, it's a juvenile hell calf, I see. And Susie can fight. Oh yeah, she can shoot it, or she can make up a, a little barrier in front of me. Okay, well, just go ahead and shoot it. This one's yours. I, I know you've got a thing for taking out cows now. <laughs> you put that abominable calf out of its misery. You got a roasted cow tongue and 26 meat. You skin the cow with your trusty knife and get extra thick leather. Oh, that's what that's for. Susie carves another notch in the stock of her rifle. Cow hate flashes in her eyes. Her resolve intensifies. Susie has become stronger. I read about this. So all of the different partners are, are just unique. You know, if I had taken Doc, then she would have only leveled up beating skeletons, I think, because she has something against you know, all the necromancy that's happening. But Susie obviously doesn't like the cows and levels up when we fight cows. Way to go. Also, I think all of the horses have different abilities too. Believe it or not. Mr. Hands is so random that I have more random events happening while we're out and about like that encounter. It's pretty interesting. Oh, here we go. We're gonna grab ourselves some needles. Don't mind if I do. Oh, Susie, something tells me we're gonna find more cows. You have anything to say about this? Another ranch burned down by friggin' cows. Damn, that steams me something fierce. I guess we should check for survivors. I can't imagine we're gonna find many down here on the ground. I will, however, find a charred locket on a pile of bones. You should call it a locket on account of how it was lucky to escape that fire. Oh boy, I hope this thing doesn't have puns engraved on it. The lock on this locket reminds you of why they call it a locket. Oh, I can pick it open. Okay, I got myself a picture of Mary Stearns. All right. Don't suppose it's a bit of a risque picture, is it? It's a photograph of a serious looking little girl. Oh, kinda hoping it was his wife. Thanksgiving, okay, very wholesome and sad, I'm sure. Uh, listen, really sorry about that, Jethro Stearns. I didn't know any better. Gwendolyn Stearns, 1895. I don't know the date, but I'm pretty sure the cows don't bury the dead when they're done, so these ones probably died a while ago. Um, hi. As you approach the grave marker, the hair on the back of your neck stands up as a voice whispers in your ear, give it to me, give it to me. I'm pretty sure that you are the child of this family, so I'm not gonna make a joke. It's an easy joke to make, but I'm not going to. Uh, give what to you? The air grows colder. The picture, the picture of me. I can see it. You have it. You shouldn't look at it. Nobody should look at it. I guess you must be Mary. Why don't you want anyone to look at it? The whisper gets quieter. Anger seeps in around the edges of the voice because they'll know. Give it to me. I I'm gonna think about it. Oh boy, she doesn't like that. What happened? What I did? Give me the picture, give it to me. That sounds pretty serious. Oh, do I wanna fight a little girl? I don't know, you, you, you know what, you, you, screw it. I don't wanna know what you did, I'm, I'm just gonna fight. She doesn't even have legs, we can take her, Susie. Cut her down, oh. Okay, I don't suppose bullets hurt. Is she about to turn me inside out? No, she's a wuss, okay, good. 
I'm sorry, little girl. I just, I don't know if you're evil or not, and I don't really respect ghosts. R really apologize about this. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I kill her? She's a ghost. Poor girl, you hope she finds some peace. You tear up her picture and scatter it to the wind. Okay, so maybe I did do good, and I got more muscle. Rest in peace, Mary. I hope that was the right decision. Having just sucker punched the ghost of a little girl, I don't know how I feel about hearing that there's danger, smoke, and noise coming from the outhouse. Am I about to fight some kind of satanic poop? Let's open the door. Oh, okay, it's just a cow. Well, get him! <laughs> Susie? Oh, sorry about that, Susie. I wanted to leave you a piece, but I'm getting stronger and stronger all the time. Like right now. The outhouse is now safe as houses. Outhouses. Yeehaw, I got some mysticality. By the soft light of the fading embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your nose with your hand as you fish out your prize. I got a toilet pistol. As if all the spit wasn't bad enough. Susie Carr is another notch in her life. Okay, yeah, listen, Susie's not gonna want to talk to me all that much because I now smell like spit and poop. Does this thing do more damage than the deputy? It sure doesn't. We're gonna be selling that as soon as we can. How are you holding up in here, Susie? Uh, I must imagine this must be a little traumatic for you considering this is what happened to your family. Nothing left, damn those devils. Kind of redundant. Hmm, I don't see any bodies. Just those graves out front. Hope whoever dug them got away. Yeah, who did dig them? Like I said, it couldn't be the cows. We had mom, dad, and daughter die. Maybe there's a family member left? Maybe we can find something in a lockbox that isn't gonna be locked for long? Ooh, a document! A stock certificate. Okay, well that's not gonna have a name on it. I don't mind diversifying my portfolio beyond meat. All of the books on this shelf are burned, but you notice something strange about the back of the shelf. I have enough anger, Moxie, because I'm a good for nothing, good for nothing, good for nothing to investigate this. Your deft fingers find a hidden catch, and the back panel of the shelf slides away to reveal a secret compartment. There's a book inside. Mary Stern's Diary. Okay, I mean, it's not like I just picked a fight with her ghost. I might as well go ahead and read her diary. How long is this? Long enough that I'm gonna give you guys the Cliff Notes version. It seems like Mary found a haunted doll called Grace out in the desert, and whenever the two of them would play with someone, that someone would disappear. And I'm guessing that is what Mary didn't want people to find out about when we picked a fight with her. <laughs> Question is, where's the talking doll? Oh, Grace. The toy box contains a single object, a creepy burnt porcelain doll. Well, I've got enough anger mysticality to talk to it, so why not? It's the work of a moment to fix the doll's voice box. Let's pull the string. You pull the string, the doll's eyes roll back into its head and its mouth begins to move. Hi, I'm Grace. What's your name? Oh, I'm Steve. Hi, Steve, you're nice. Do you want to play with me? Oh, yeah, sure, why not? What's the worst that could happen? Hooray, Mary used to play with me, but we didn't get to finish our tea party before she went away. Will you help me finish it? Surely! Hooray! The game is almost over! Mary did such a good job! The doll's eyes roll back forward. Go downstairs and get my cup! Do you know the magic word to make the mean cow let you into the secret room? Is it... Please? Beef tenders? I, I, I don't know, I don't know. The magic word is peanut butter. That's... Two words, Grace. I'm not gonna piss off the doll. Okay, got it, peanut butter. You shudder as you realize that talking dolls haven't been invented yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna investigate the basement, but I don't think we're gonna be siding with her. Ooh, we got a safe. We can crack it, but we need the safe cracking ability. All right, I think I can come back here, unlike most of the other places. Pile of loose boards, food on the shelf. Hey, a little sarsaparilla, and cat's eyes candy. Candy. Very important. <laughs> now is not the time to be doing handstands on the lantern. Uh, oh, this must be the mean cow. Yep, there's a weird cow-shaped stain on the wall. Let's whisper peanut butter to it. Okay, then. Interesting. Atop this sinister-looking altar sits a copper goblet filled with what appears to be blood. <gasps> I can destroy it with my five muscle, or I can take it. Mmm. 
really don't want to side with the evil doll. Let's destroy it. Screw it. You don't know what this is, but you know it's abominable. You grab the goblet and smash it against the altar. Everywhere the blood lands, cracks appear. The altar groans as it crumbles into ruin. I leveled up. I got more mysticality. Okay. Nice. Let's go see what the doll feels about that. I don't suppose there's anything hidden in these corners that wants to eat my soul, no? It's always worth checking. You never know when you're going to find something to blow up. How do you feel about all this? What in the Sam Hill? What's this cow skull painted up on the wall for? Oh, you just got to whisper peanut butter to it. It's cool. It's a little weird. Yeah, we'll do a thing like that. And why? Hmm, I can't imagine. I'll fill you in once we get the hell out of here. Otherwise, you're going to be a little mad at me. Oh, Dolly. Oh, I wonder if she's mad. Grace's eyes glow red. You must know what you did. You'll live to regret this. Hee <laughs> hee. Her mouth snaps shut as her eyelids close. Well, that's only a little bit ominous. Oh, you'll be back, will you? Okay, then. Listen, Mr. Hands, I know you see a lot of messed up stuff already, but if you happen to have one of those googly eyes spot a talking doll named Grace, maybe just give me a heads up. No reason why. We're getting the hell out of here, though. Oh, we have a lot left to see. I should probably hurry up, but at the same time, I don't really want to go to the railroad camp and head further west yet. I kind of want to go to Fort Cowardice, because I think there's something waiting for us. Please tell me you're not a ghost. <gasps> Off to one side of the trail, you see a covered wagon and a small family of settlers who look upset. You folks okay? We're on our way to dirt water, but our wagon went and broke down on us. Well, that's rough. You're liable to get attacked by bandits out here, or snakes, or coyotes, or ghosts, or other things that basically live exclusively on stranded travelers. Isn't there something you could do to help us? I could give them a ride back to dirt water, I could ask Susie to fix their wagon, or I could leave them to their own devices. I don't really want to go all the way back to dirt water, but I mean, Susie's handy. Susie, you know about wagons and stuff. You think you could fix this? I reckon. Susie crawls under the wagon and pokes around for a bit, then reappears and chucks a dead rat over her shoulder. Rat in your carburetor? She'll be fine now. Oh, thank you so much. We got some gumption. Groovy. Weird. All right, Fort Cowardice. I don't suppose you have anything to say about this now, do you? Susie, 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 Susie. Don't you ignore me, Susie. There we go. <laughs> Quiet is church on Tuesday. Guess we missed the party. Yeah, it must be abandoned for some reason. Weird. Uh, just like the old saying goes, when life gives you cannons, make cannonade. Okay. <laughs> Everything about this is weird. I don't know how I feel about any of this. You climb up to the watchtower, take a look around. Nice view from here. Do you spot anyone though? Anyone at all? Any, hello? Nope. All right, that's not good. There's no one in administration or the mess hall. This cabinet is mostly empty, but there are a handful of boring personal records in the back of one drawer. Let's examine them. They are incredibly boring. No, really, I want details. <laughs> Patricia Smith, uh, okay. Uh, no, another one, Walter Reed. Very good. Lieutenant Rebecca LeBlanc. No, I'm not satisfied. Charles Stern, clerk, uh, not deceased. So that might be who we're looking for. That might be who survived. Interesting. Okay, keep an eye out for a Charles if we come across multiple people. <laughs> this was once a reception desk, but now the most appropriate thing to see would be a free trip to the dump. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna find a whole lot here. Other than, you know, maybe some hard tack, hard tack, and military grade whiskey. Not too bad. And a spice rack with saltpeter. All right, so that's what we were looking for. And we just gotta hope to find some people in maybe the general's office? Yeah, in general, this is a door. More specifically, it's the door of the general's office. Even more specifically, it's the locked door to the general's office, but not for long. I get to go in. Does just me or does the general look like a goblin who's currently taking pot shots at a pie safe? The goblin seated at this desk is repeatedly firing their pistol at that pie safe. I really don't want to outright murder it. I, I kind of jumped the gun with the last guy when it turns out 
I could have read a book in Doc Alice's place and learned how to speak Goblin, which I did, so maybe I can talk to him? Let's get their attention. Say, oh, uh, what are you doing? Shooting pies, always, always shooting pies. Could you elaborate on that? Could you elaborating on that? Why, shooting a pie? Yes, to destroying, obviously. Must to destroying a terrible pie. What is wrong with the pie? Bah, human will never understanding. No, really, why a pie shooting? Shut up, it's so much angry. Looking, I pretty sure being a pie is destroyed. Destroy, uh, uh, huh? Look, so many holes in a pie safe. You winning, a pie is dead. You certain being? Oh, waiting here, I will checking. M my brain melting. Hey, can you calm down with the shots? You peek through the bullet holes. Yup, that pie is shot to hell. Let's deliver the good news before he accidentally hits us. Hooray, you are a success. A pie is very destroyed being. I, I doing it? So much doing it. But now what? Huh? What are shooting now? Um, I guess you finding another pie? What? There are more pies being? Yes, a world is full of pies. Oh no, this violencing will never ending. Sorry being, not wishing to enabling this behavior. No, this is my cross bearing. I must going and continuing the fight. Okay. Thanking you. Okay, I wishing you good luck against a forces of pie. I can't intimidate him, apparently. I guess I'll just salute him and he's on his way. General Gob strides out the door, jaw clenched, eyes resolute with pie hatred. Well, that was weird. I guess I'm the general now. <gasps> what just happened? This is good. I, I found a document in the medical tent. It's, it's marching orders directing a rifle division to Fort Aldead, far to the north of Dirtwater. So I've discovered it. Treacherous territory up there. A feller ought to be careful. Will do. I don't suppose we could find Charles up there. I don't know why I would want to find him, though, other than to let him know I picked a fight with his dead sister. <laughs> oh, but maybe the doll went after him? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Grace. This is all very confusing and kind of scary. But you know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of West of Loathing, guys. We've got the Dream Team together. You know, we're out adventuring now. Things are happening. And if you guys wanna see this continue to be a series, as always, be sure to leave a like in the video. Show your support. These videos aren't really doing all that well. I've, I've noticed that they're kinda of struggling. You know, just the thumbnails aren't all that attractive. It's a black and white game. It's not for everyone. And it kinda of makes it hard for me to devote myself to a long series, but I'm having enough fun that I definitely wanna continue it. And like I said, if you guys wanna see it, show some support and maybe I'll return to find that haunted doll again soon. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.